brutal double murder. Two prime suspects. And a grieving mother, fearing she may lose another child. The victims, Melissa Arokium, hacked to death in her hallway. Her son, Anthony Arokium, seven, butchered in his sleep. The suspects, their 38-year-old neighbor, Dio Naris, and 33-year-old Kane Harvester Serrano Arokium, who is the murdered woman's older brother. He's also the uncle of her murdered son. Well, we we been had been a field gun. We had malaria, right? And my sister from Suriname and I'm saying, them catch because them try to get you with me phone and at the same time signal just drop, come and drop. So sometimes then they get me. So she get me when the signal come on back. So she say, um, you know somebody chop up please, eh? Call on me, you know if she dead or what. So me call me little son right away. And he said, yeah, somebody killed Melissa. Well, they, then them still no know the, the, my grandson did. And neighbor now call me and say, Auntie Sherry, if you see people there, then kill Melissa and then kill Anthony too. And me holler right away because me can't believe that. Me can't believe that. Then kill my dad. And my son tell them he been at work, then supposed to go to the workplace and check, right? And see all the work. He want, want, want them by telling me, Sir, I don't even help me to done cut cane because they just help pardon, pardon when they not done cut this cane. You know, so they just help one another. So he helped them cut out their cane and all of them come home. Sherry Passad says she doesn't understand why the police are treating her son as a suspect. My son been a walk. Then she's walking close so don't mean know why them doing this. And her last two children already, my grandson and my daughter. And now my son get this thing get me sick this man. Me go hospital, my pressure high, my sugar high. Me can't eat my body belly bun. Me can my son there. there. I mean I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I come from the market uh, around like quarter to quarter two I done from the market. And I said, I'll come at the back here if I go use the toilet. So when I come in now, I see my sister bike at the side here. And I call in, so I call, call and me in here, nobody answer. Normally I know she just use her bike if she got to go on the road and come back. Because she can't walk from here to tilt to the road. When then I come, I call, I said, I just check, see if this door open. When I go and push the door, the door open up. There she lay down on the ground in the blood just so. She done dead already when I come. And I just, after that, I just um, come back and end up and call my wife and she tell me, let me don't touch nothing. I just go to the station straight and make a report. Mm -hmm. And I go and I make a report and two other police didn't come with me. And after then, them take over from there. Investigators believe that the victims were slain between 6.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. From the state of the bodies, the detectives have suggested that they were killed during the latter stages of the morning. That's not what Rose Arokian believes. Normally, Melissa would get up early in the morning. Anthony would still be sleeping. She would get up, she would open out your house, she would start doing her housework early, sweep out. If she got soaked on clothes, she would soak down her clothes, wash it out the side here and do everything and then she would bathe and change her clothes into, you know, something. Now she's sleeping clothes, she would take off that bed, change off. She would normally come out and they in the shop, in the hammock. She could open the front of the shop, she could lock in the back and she could they in the hammock. So anybody come, they would see she there. Anthony normally would get up like seven something, eight o'clock. We don't think Melissa was killed like late in the day, like midday. And the reason why we said that is because Melissa wouldn't have been in her sleeping clothes till in the midday. She would have done bed. She's a very cleansy girl. She don't like, you know, like thing. She would have done bed. She would have done chain. She would have done do she walk. She wouldn't, you know, like give she broomed up the chairs. I can't like what we see, like she was just 
up for do she work and she not had the chance to do anything because she broom was on top of the chair right where she was murdered. Some of Melissa's jewelry were missing, but investigators aren't convinced that robbery was the primary motive. Jealousy? A dispute perhaps? I'm not getting a little more tax. Siran, you got to pass your money for pay your light bill. No, no big set of things. Siran, and Nicholas, Melissa, and all of them. I used to stay here two years and something back. And I know how the family is. Minor things, them would quarrel for, but not to the extent like forget violent with each other. Normally, my might cuss and talk a little hard and that's it. And here's another puzzle. How did the killer with blood-stained clothes and weapon manage to slip away from the area unseen, even avoiding security cameras? That's led detectives to surmise that he most likely lives close to his victims. And that brings us to the second suspect, Dio Naris, the victim's neighbor, like Serrano Arukiam. Nice was arrested, released, and rearrested last Monday. But if not these two suspects, who else might there be? Yeah, well, let me tell you, to be honest, she used to sell, you don't hear she used to sell weed, right? And she used to, she last, she called me and tell me she last cup of pound. And I told her, I said, me let me why you done this business. When I come home, um, I'm going to give you money for do business. Me why you stop this? This is a dangerous business. She said, yeah, mommy, me know I'm going to stop. One thing me want to them bush the back there, too big. People can't hide inside. When you see me there, me, me frightened for going there back. I want somebody who know who killed my grandson and my daughter to come forth and say something because this is too hard for me. I know I'm going to live out with this thing. I miss my grandson, I miss my son. I miss my daughter. Meanwhile, a mother grieves, her family prays, and a community awaits the unmasking of a killer. Michael Jordan, reporting for Big Smith News Watch.